everyone. Today we are working on San Myers reaction and we are going to make two iodobenzoic acid. So we start with anthranilic acid reacted with sodium nitride and HCl to get the diazonium salt. And once the diazonium salt is formed, we add potassium iodide solution to get our desired product, which is two iodobenzoic acid. So I'm starting with 1.58 grams of anthranilic acid, sodium nitride 1.0 gram, and potassium iodide 1.8 gram. Let's go ahead and set up the reaction. We'll start with measuring anthranilic acid. I'm using a 125 Urmat flask. We'll tear the Urmat flask to zero. To my earn math class, I'm going to add a stir bar. And I need about 10 milliliters of DI water. Add it to anthranolic acid. And then I have three milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid. Once we add all of these, we will gently start heating and stirring to make it a homogeneous solution. We will be weighing sodium nitrite. It's one gram of sodium nitrite. To the sodium nitrite, I'm going to add five ml of DI water. and swirl it to make a solution and place it in some ice bath to cool down. Turn off the heating when the solution is homogeneous. Once the homogeneous solution is formed, we'll place it in the ice bath. We'll give it about five to 10 minutes for both the solution to cool down before we start adding. Weighing potassium iodide in a small beaker, tear the beaker and then add approximately 1.8 grams of potassium iodide. To the potassium iodide, I'm going to add three ml of DI water and swirl to make a solution. And I'll let it stand for a few minutes. I will label my solutions, that potassium iodide and the solution has cooled down. I am not checking with the thermometer, but give it about five minutes to cool the solution. And using a glass pipette, I will start adding cold sodium nitrite solution dropwise. the solution has started changing. It looks like a pale yellow solution. I will let it cool for another five minutes for the reaction to complete. So after cooling about five minutes, the sodium nitride anthranilic solution, I'm going to add my potassium iodide solution. As you can see, a tan solution is being formed. And I let it stand for some time. While the mixture is standing, I'm going to go ahead and place a water bath to warm up and add a clamp. While the water bath warms up, you can check the temperature. We need around 40 degrees Celsius. So the temperature of the water bath is around 40 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and clamp my solution mixture. Slowly lower it down. So at 40 degrees Celsius, we would let the mixture stir for about 10 minutes.
It's been about 10 minutes. We will increase the heat for the water bath to get to about 90 degrees Celsius and heat the solution for another 10 minutes. Place it in the ice bath. We would also put some DI water to cool down for the filtration. To this cold solution, I'm going to add a pinch of sodium bisulfite to decolorize the iodine. Now we will set up the filtration. Connect the orange hose with the filtering flask. Use a filter paper on the funnel. Use a filtration adapter. Turn on the vacuum and transfer. Wash the Anma flask with some ice cold water to get, the, get most of the product into the filtration funnel. So this is how the product looks like. We'll go ahead and transfer our product into a beaker and add about nine ml of ethanol. So I'm washing the funnel so I can get all the product into my beaker. And then I'm going to warm it up to dissolve. We'll add about 5 ml of hot water. I can use the warm water bath. This was DI water, so about 5 ml I'm going to add to the solution. Next up, I'll add a few charcoal chips. And I'm using a clean iron mat flask because the product solution will be collecting into the filtering flask. Use a new filter paper. For the charcoal solution filtration, make sure your solution is hot. I'll add some hot water on the filter paper to avoid crystallization on the filter paper. And then turn off this heat and transfer right away, turn on the vacuum. You can wash this beaker with some hot water. The product solution is down here and the funnel contains the stir bar and the charcoal. As you can see as it cools down, the product crystal has started forming. These are yellow crystals forming. I'll let it cool down for a few more minutes before you can filter it out. I place this flask with the crystals forming in the ice water and I'm also placing some DI water to cool down for the final filtration. Before the final filtration, make sure you weigh the filter paper with the watch glass, tear the balance and record the mass. Place the filter paper and connect it to the vacuum. Wet the filter paper with some cold DI water. Turn on the vacuum and then transfer your product solution. If you press the funnel for a few seconds, it'll seal and the filtration will be fast. We can rinse the flask with some cold DI water and rinse our crystals. This is how the product looks like, yellow crystals. Let it sit in the vacuum for a few minutes before you weigh it out. Scoop up the product into the watch glass. And weigh our product. Tear the balance and record the mass. 
At the end of the reaction, we crystallized our product and filtered it out. The mass of the filter paper with watch glass was 37.74 grams, and mass of the product with the filter paper and watch glass was 38.49 grams. So the difference between these two numbers will get you the mass of the product, find the limiting reactant, and percent yield.